A few weeks ago, I posted a video that showed you how to get the free tier version of Cisco's CML, the Cisco Modeling Labs, which is an emulator that lets you practice lab topologies for your CCNA, your CCMP studies. And I'm going to give a link to that video in the description of this video if you haven't seen it yet. That video shows you how to get it downloaded for free, how to get it set up, how to build basic topologies, how to go into the console, how to export your topology with the configuration and then import that later on. And using that video as a resource, I want to start now a series of videos where we're going to be doing several different CCNA and CCMP tasks using CML. And in this video, we want to start out with a lab on VLANs. And you can follow along in your free copy of CML. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to put a switch on our topology, how we can give a base configuration to that switch. Then we'll want to create some VLANs, give them names, assign interfaces or ports to those VLANs, see what happens when we delete VLANs as well, and take a look at the VLAN database. Let's get started. All right, let's get started with our VLAN lab. And again, I encourage you to follow along on your free copy of Cisco CML. I'm gonna add a topology and I'm gonna name this topology VLAN lab, and I'm going to keep it really simple. We'll just add a single node. So under add nodes, I'm going to select an iOS on Linux layer two switch, just one switch. And I'm going to give it a name. I'll click on it and say its name is SW1. And let's start it up. I'll say lab, start lab, and that will start all the nodes in my lab, which is currently one node. And after it becomes fully active, we'll go to the console. The check mark says that it is active. Let's right click and say console. I'll say open console. And we see that we're sitting at our Cisco iOS prompt. And I'm going to give some base configurations that I like to do for switches. And I have a text document where I can copy and paste those. I go into enable mode. I go into global configuration. I give it a name. I prevent DNS lookups if I mistype a Cisco iOS command. And we're connecting in CML via con zero, console zero. And I want logging synchronous turned on. So if some sort of console message displays while I'm typing a command, it's not going to mess up my command. It's going to give my command wherever I left off typing on a fresh line. I never want it to time out. I'll exit my configuration and I'll copy the running config to the startup config. So let me just copy all this plus one extra hard return. I'll do a copy. Let's go to our console and paste. And we've got a base configuration now. Let's begin by taking a look at the VLANs we have by default. I'll do a show VLAN. And by the way, I prefer a different command. I prefer show VLAN brief because it doesn't give me a lot of extra stuff about source route bridging that I could care less about. So show VLAN brief shows that I've got this one default VLAN and this emulated switch has four ethernet ports. I'm not going to be concerned at all about these other VLANs. This is for FDDI and token ring and I literally haven't used those in over two decades. So I'm just concerned with VLAN 1. And let's say that I want to create a brand new VLAN. I'll go into global configuration mode and I'll say VLAN and I'll give it a number of 100. Let's give it a name. I'll say its name is engineering. Let's create another VLAN. I'll say VLAN 200 and that creates it out of thin air. And I'll say its name is sales. Now let's take a look at our VLANs again. I'll do another show VLAN brief command. And you notice that I now have these two new VLANs, but they're empty. They don't have any ports. Let's see how to assign a port or an interface to a VLAN. One way is to go into each interface. I'll go into interface ethernet zero slash zero, and I'll say, I want you to belong to the engineering VLAN. And I'll say switch port access VLAN access because this is a port that is going to be speaking to one and only one VLAN. In other words, it's not a trunk interface. It's an access interface or an access port. I'll say, I want you to belong to VLAN 100. Let's say that I wanted Ethernet 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2 to belong to VLAN 200. I could go in and individually assign them to VLAN 200, but here's a shortcut. Instead of going into interface configuration mode, 
I can go into Interface Range Configuration Mode for Ethernet 0-1 through Ethernet 0-2. And now notice my prompt is Interface Range. And I'll say I want you to belong to VLAN 200. Now if I do a Show VLAN Brief, we see that we have now populated our newly created VLANs. Ethernet 0 slash 0, it belongs to VLAN 100, engineering. Ethernet 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, they both belong to sales, VLAN 200. Now, let's say that I want to delete a VLAN. If I delete VLAN 100, engineering, here's a question for you. If I say, in fact, I'll go ahead and do it. If I say no VLAN 100, poof, it's gone. It's no longer in my VLAN database. What do you think happened to this interface? Ethernet 0 slash 0. It's like I pulled the rug out from under it. I said, your VLAN is no longer existent. What happened to it? Did it go back to the default VLAN of 1? Did the fact that that VLAN was populated prevent me from really deleting it? Let's see. Let's do a show VLAN brief again, and it's nowhere to be seen. That interface is now unusable, and that is a big caution for us. So the moral of the story here is, before we delete a VLAN, let's reassign the interfaces in that VLAN. Now I can still, even though it's not visible, I can still assign it to the default VLAN of one. Let's do that. I'll say interface ethernet zero slash zero. And I'll say, I want you to belong to access VLAN one. If I do another show VLAN brief, it has now reappeared. It is back from the void. And something interesting to note is when I'm creating these VLANs, their existence isn't just dependent on the uh, startup config or the running config. There's actually a file that gets created and it's the uh, VLAN database file. And on a physical Cisco switch, you would typically do a show flash command to look at the flash storage and you would see a file called vlan.dat. That's your VLAN database. Here in this emulated environment, I don't have flash, but if I do a dir, you see that I do have this file, vlan.dat-00001. That is my VLAN database. And that's important to know where to find that VLAN database when we work with a feature that we'll be talking about in an upcoming video, which is VTP. And on that note, we'll wrap up this video dealing with VLANs and uh, keep an eye out for the next video in this series that I'll be doing. That's going to cover trunking. I'll see you back for that next time.